This question reads, a particle is located at position minus 11 when the clock reads 9 seconds. It then moves at a steady speed of 3 meters per second to the left for 2 seconds. It is then stationary for 4 seconds. Finally, it takes an additional 8 seconds to move 15 meters to the right. Right is positive, left is negative. And the question that they want to know is, what is the object's average velocity during this journey? So let's start off with a number line. Let's put a zero in the beginning. And we start off at minus 11. So let's go here, minus 11. And the clock is reading 9. So let's put the 9 already in the clock. It then moves at a steady speed of 3 meters per second to the left for 2 seconds. 3, 2 is a 6. So it's going to go from minus 11, 6 to the left. So that's minus 11 goes to minus 17. That's minus 17. And the clock has gone from 9, an additional 2 seconds. So that's now reading 11. Uh, it is stationary for four seconds, so the clock, while it's stationary here, has gone from 11 to 15 seconds. And the final step, let's put an arrow in here. And the final step is, uh, in an additional eight seconds, it moves 15 meters to the right. Well, that's going to take us way down here to minus two. And the clock is going to be 8 seconds added on to the 15, which is 23 seconds. So here we are at minus 2 meters. That's our address. And the clock is now saying 23 seconds. So our average velocity is equal to our displacement divided by our time taken. And that is equal to our final position minus our initial position over our final time minus our initial time. And that is equal to, I look at my diagram now, and I go my final position is minus 2, and my initial position was minus 11. And then I look at the diagram again, and I say my final time is 23. And my initial time was 9. So this equals minus 2 minus minus 11 is minus 2 plus 11, which is plus 9 divided by 23 minus 9 is going to be 14. So my average velocity is plus 9 over 14 meters per second. I'm going to leave that as a fraction, but it could just as easily be expressed as a, as a decimal. Notice there were a variety of ways of giving the information. We didn't start off at zero on our clock. It didn't matter. Uh, we were given a motion in terms of a, a speed and a direction for a certain time. We were given motion instructions based on an actual position, how far we moved in a given time. And incidentally, we could have a situation where you were given an address to travel to in a given time. So there's various ways of giving you instructions about what happens to your position. And there's various ways of, of giving you time information. But the trick is we started following our equation and followed it all the way through. There is another way. And if I draw out a position versus time graph. So this is time, and this is position. Let's call this in meters and this in seconds. I know that all my numbers are negative, so I drew my graph with my axis just there. And if I look at this, then I know that I start off at 9. So let's make this 9, and I'm at minus 11. So let's go here to minus 11. And there's the start of my journey. And then I know that I go to minus 17. 
but my clock is now at mine at 11 seconds. And I'm there. And that's the part of the journey I've done so far. And then I know I am stationary for another four seconds. So that's 11 through to 15. Uh, so that's going to be 9, 11, and 4 makes 15. So this is 15 seconds. And I didn't go any further. So here I am at 15. And at 15 seconds, and now I look at my final part of my journey. I go to minus 2, and I'm at 23. So there's my journey shown graphically. And the average velocity is the displacement divided by the time. Rise over run, of course. So here's my rise, and here's my run. And my rise is, well, basically went from minus 11 to minus 2, which is plus 9. And my run... My run, I went from 9 to 23, 23, that would be 13, uh, would be uh, 14 seconds. So velocity is equal to, average velocity, is equal to rise over run. For this is a, this is a position versus time graph, which equals plus 9 over 14 meters per second. And there we have it. Two different ways of getting to the same answer. Some people find the way using the equation more comfortable. Other people find the way using the graph more comfortable. As always, we'd like to get really good at both so that either one will be of value to us.